Hey, this is Lester Martin. I'm going to do another quick book review today. Well, hopefully it'll be quick. It's on No Sequel Distilled uh, by uh, Pramod Kumar, Satellage, and Martin Fowler, Fowler uh, both of ThoughtWorks. Um, you know, as the title is called, you know, the, and the trend and the technology is called No SQL, maybe we start off with asking a quick question. This is a little uh, tidbit from me. You know, what's wrong with SQL? And uh, authors and I, I think, are, are in agreement. Not, not a lot. You know, relational databases are here. They've been here for a long time. They're very mature uh, and provide us, as you see on the screen, there are a number of benefits um, uh, from ACID, uh, the ACID test, from transactions, even uh, distributed transactions. Uh, and very well understood, lots of skills around that. Um, maybe the, the you know, if, if there was something wrong with SQL, it might be things that are old. Uh, and well known, which is the old impedance mismatch between uh, object graphs that we have in memory and what we see in the data model itself. Um, secondarily, as we start talking about big data, ludicrous data, whatever our funny word there is, um, the real answer is maybe these um, technologies won't be able to scale. Debatable, um, but let's go for the argument they can't scale or they can't scale uh, cost effectively enough. Uh, and there you go. I gave you a great example of cell phones uh, tracking their resort, uh, tracking their location all day long. Could easily be, you know, for one vendor, maybe a terabyte plus records a day. So, again, nothing really wrong with where we are today. But what is no SQL? Um, the authors use these characteristics right here. I think they're right on the money. Definitely not relational. Um, built for for clustering, right out of the gate. Almost always are open source. Um, and really came about because we have new problems, um, uh, new new web properties. Uh, we all think of the Facebooks and the Twitters, of course. Schema list is another characteristic you hear a lot about, and we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more, as well as that last bullet. Um, often a complaint there, or a concern you hear is there's no transaction in NoSQL databases. Um, and that's true, but again, when you look at a new technology, maybe the approach you take... Um, and the concern you have from another technology may or may not be uh, as warranted. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and then the book itself really is, under, under, under the underpinning is, is this notion of polyglot persistence. Um, we'll definitely talk more about this at the tail end. But, you know, it's really saying just like polyglot uh, programming, there might be many technologies to solve your problem. And they might coexist together to have a, a, a cohesive solution that makes the best sense for your environment. So more on that one as we go along. Uh, old news, hopefully to everyone listening, relational data models. We've got ERDs, we've got data definition language, tables, relationships, foreign key relationships often. Um, the note to maybe to call out here is that in this notion of aggregates that we're going to discuss in a second, this data model is aggr aggregate ignorant. And, and let me explain aggregate in the next slide and that'll might make a little more sense but in, an, in, in a nutshell, assume aggregate ignorance means that this data model could support a variety of ways of looking at this data without uh, a benefit or a consequence. So aggregate data models. This is pretty key to most of the NoSQL databases out there. They all take a little different approach, but, uh, but it, is, it is a cornerstone element, and it fits in the biggest difference here is, you know, schema list, aggregate, it really kind of says that that data model that you have, um, which could be changing for every record in a, in a traditional table that we think about with the database, could be dramatically different. So that said, we're going to bundle data and model definition or metadata or structure along that together. And we think of XML, we think of JSON, VSON. Uh, and the example that you see there on the screen is representing uh, the previous example, uh, again, with data and, and, uh, and structure bundled together. Um, and it may, um, you know, the, I, guess the, I guess maybe a good thing to think about this aggregate data model is how you view your application or how your application views your data, retrieves and stores your data, and you end up modeling around that. There's a whole good section in the book about this. Uh, in fact, I took a MongoDB, the course is for free. Check out education. Uh, uh, Tengen dot, um, dot com for a free Mongo class. Uh, definitely over many weeks you can go into this and understand a lot better. Uh, but one thing to note about those transactions, 
transactions do occur in an aggregate. So if I have an order with the order line and the order payers, in this case, this person with their addresses and their uh, credit cards and bank accounts, etc., then uh, when I store this information, I will that will be that will be an atomic transaction itself. So transactioning is different. It's not there for scalability reasons that you'll understand more as you look into the technology, but there will be a it happened or it didn't happen operation when you when you work on aggregates. Um, types of NoSQL technologies again this may uh, be old news but uh, the the four primary buckets that we're calling things are key values, uh, document column families, and graph databases. Graphs are kind of a different animal and I won't talk a lot about them uh, in this quick uh, presentation here but definitely they're covered in the book. Very interesting uh, it's more of a relationship database. How, how does this person interact with that person or this business uh, with that, with that, uh, with that uh, potentially other business or with those individuals or with this product, etc. It's it's pretty interesting. Uh, the meat and taters are the are the you know the, the top three. The key value store is very straightforward. If you think of a map, if you think of a, a memcache, you think of ehcache, any kind of key and then a value, and that value could be just about anything you want it to be in just about any kind of format. Uh, maybe column family stores be good to mention last next. A richer version of that, where there's a key, now the value becomes um, simplified, maybe a map of maps. Um, you really just have to sit down and, and think about this and see some examples. The book's great, great for running you through those. Uh, and then document databases, much like what you just saw, that JSON description of uh, data plus uh, metadata about it. That's a uh, very indicative of what you would see in a, uh, in a in a document database. And the entire aggregate uh, looks a lot like an object graph. Very hard to uh, walk through. Very very straightforward, easy to read and understand. Um, that term schema list is an interesting one, and it turns a lot of people off, and it turns a lot of people uh, on, I guess. Uh, so I would say, is, uh, are we really schema list in NoSQL databases? Well, technically, yes, definitely, of course. But practically, um, that, that's not really the case. It's kind of not exactly. And what that really means is uh, all you app developers know that if you're going to a store and you're pulling a customer or an order or a trade or an activity, you know, uh, you, you're expecting that data in some kind of format. So what you get is an opportunity to be a little looser about that. You get an opportunity to, to quicker, more quickly develop and not have your traditional cycles of, of rebuilding when the schema changes and dealing with what about data that's already half baked? I got to do that migration now or flush the database. So your, your development cycles can be much faster. Having the application be mostly concerned with the schema, not the persistent store. And so what you kind of see there, uh, mentioned, you know, similar structures that could be as data is evolving. It could be by def by design. You may want to have uh, different things and address. Uh, storing profiles for people all over the world may have some uh, some consistent values, but may have some different things. Uh, take a look at the uh, Mexico's address format. Very interesting if you want to see something that looks dramatically different than uh, its neighbors to the north over here in the United States. Um, and, you know, again, you, you're modeling, when you go through that data modeling exercise, uh, or you're thinking about your data, you really are looking about how you read and you write that data and what it's contained, who, who, who is that cohesive, rich object graph. And if you need it to be rich object graph, if not, it could be very flat as well. And you're not so concerned with traditional data modeling things as this third normal form uh, and the like of that. And I guess a, a good note for those of us that practice separation of concerns and, and service layers, etc., the truth is, you know, with that database being schema list, being the application owned, being you know, potentially having anomalies uh, that, that traditional data modelers would not like, then we really don't want people interacting outside of the core application that understands how this schemaless, NoSQL database is being used. We really don't want folks integrating directly with that. Um, so wrap it that with a service layer, service layer uh, and, and we'll be in a lot better shape. Um, distri distribution models very lightly. This is, you know, definitely a deep conversation and subject, but it's it's the things you can imagine: partitioning, sharding concepts, or putting information uh, using multiple machines, multiple disks to store uh, sales by region or number of stores, stores one through a hundred uh, sales history on this partition, etc. Do things so that we can 
we can scale wide and have that horizontal scaling. Um, I buried a secret link in there. I think uh, if you go to SlideShare, I'll try to put it in the description uh, for these slides. There's a great link to the old, you know, Mongo is web scale. And if you haven't watched that, uh, please take a few minutes. I promise you it'll, it'll be some of the, the best uh, silly yet funny yet sad, yet entertaining uh, uh, topic you've seen in a while. If you have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. So uh, replication, copying that information many times so we have an opportunity not to lose it, very straightforward. And often you combine sharding and replication together. Again, complex topics. The book does a good job of covering them at, at a, you know, uh, at the 10,000 foot level instead of the 100,000 foot level, but definitely still independent of specific technologies because they all follow some general sets of patterns here. And then lastly, while we're talking about these, these humongous big data environments, sometimes you might be able to get away with using a single server um, and using these technologies. And if so, go for it. Your, your world is going to be much more uh, straightforward and less complex, complicated and definitely will scream a little faster. Uh, and it lets you grow from there as well. Um, I am not going to talk about this, but... Uh, uh, a gentleman that works with me came in uh, so when I had this slide up and kind of laughed. Oh, the cap theorem. Well, you can't bring up NoSQL without bringing up the cap theorem and base and, 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 and eventual consistency. So I'm letting you glance at this. This is a very, uh, again, a very big conversation all by itself around pick the two of consistency and availability and part, uh, partition tolerance that you want. And you, know, you can find a technology that suits that best. Uh, I'll show you a slide in a second to show maybe a little bit more about that. And then, you know, you, again, if you if you know anything about databases and the atomic, consistent, isolated, and durable acid test, well, you know, NoSQL has a base, uh, I guess more on observation or characteristics. Um, and, and if CAP was a deep conversation, then base is more of a, um, a barroom conversation. I think there's, these phrases are... Um, not well defined, uh, and the authors actually put very little, uh, in, you know, very little focus on this phrase base, especially. Uh, but eventually, consistent is a concept that uh, many of the databases uh, in the, that we talk about here uh, uh, show up. So again, cap theorem and base. There you go. It's a great picture out there. Just search for that visual guide to NoSQL systems if you want to see this. But uh, and there's several other graphics of the same thing. But pick cap theorem, pick the two that uh, that are most important to you and use them. Um, the book does run through a number of, the, the book picks uh, a specific technology in each one of those four types. Uh, the book talks a lot about, um, uh, uh, I think it was Ryak, yeah, yeah. For the v, uh, key values, MongoDB for document, uh, Cassandra, the column family, and Neo4j. Again, uh, we didn't talk a lot about graphs. Very interesting. Uh, conversation. I, I, if you haven't really investigated there, there's some really good information to go dig out and look into it. Uh, the book really runs down by each one of these types, uh, a, a de dedicates a full chapter to the information you see on the right there, and some good cases and some bad cases, uh, patterns, anti-patterns, where we should try to use these, uh, or at least, you know, could, or could and def or definitely should not. Uh, and again, they, they bring up that phrase, polygot persistence, uh, somewhat regularly in the book. And it really means these things all have specific use cases. Let's find where they make sense. And it might mean we have more than one database in our end application. Um, so again, on Polygot, there you go. There's an example of what we might have built and, or might have in production today. An e-commerce platform that has a variety of functionality has to do, but all that information is persisted in one relational database. Our choice was which vendor to choose an open source or paid, a paid software, but, but it really was pick one and use it for everything. And the intention of uh, Polygon Persistence is, uh, well, there might be a use case very specific to uh, ses session data. A key value store might make a lot more sense than trying to unwind that and bury it in a database or even store a blob or a cloud in a database of sorts. Uh, but there's almost always going to be some place for that relational database. And, and in this case, I actually introduced on the right there, customer social graph hey, you know, our e-commerce platform wanted to do more, and there was a great use case for that uh, database that could address that graph databases. But ultimately, as I said earlier, you want to go a little further, and you want to wrap those databases with, with a service tier all their own. Um, again, you can argue that the box above was insinuating that, but I want to, I want to bring the point home uh, that that's the even better. 
So kind of driving to the end because I, I promised myself uh, since my last book report, uh, book review went quite long, I, I promised myself to go quickly through this. And uh, the trick is, while these are awesome, the truth is um, right now, for many cases, if not most cases, um, they, these probably aren't the right technologies. Uh, you know, the, the, as we talked about maturity, we talk about, about operationalizing that has happened over the years in relational databases by knowing we can go find uh, programmers and database administrators and system administrators to help us get something done, as well as QA folks and BAs to help us with this. The world understands relational databases, uh, warts and all, and uh, that's something that's hard to, to overlook. But, you know, you, all that said, you still want to use NoSQL. Well, you know, if it, if it makes sense in your organization just to introduce it for the fun of it, good for you. Give me a call. Uh, I want to come work with you. But most of us live in this place called the real world. And uh, what we really need to do there is find that compelling reason. Find a true use case where, you know, uh, it's the, we're going to get so much more out of this. And, and the, the pain that we're going to get uh, ahead of time is, is worthwhile. So please, you know, be on the lookout for those. And, and that might be the best place. And then, and again, hedge a batch, as I said. So wrap, put a service layer around uh, that database instead of having lots and lots of points of presence touching this database. Uh, wrap it appropriately. Uh, put a service, service layer on top of that. Uh, it'll, it'll give you some, uh, some uh, great opportunities to mess up and, and fix it later. So in summary, the book is short and sweet. It's about uh, truly 150-ish. Uh, pages. I think there's a few more sections at the end, but it's a short and sweet book. Uh, most of us have little time, so I appreciate that. Uh, if you haven't, if you're brand new to NoSQL, um, I think it's a worthwhile book if you're totally brand new, but I think it's a little better. So if you read it then, maybe read it quickly, and as you start doing a little more research, maybe then come back and go through it again one more time. But uh, if you're already there, uh, I enjoyed the book. I think it, uh, again, more of a solidification uh, if you've already looked in these in these various technologies, uh, uh, there won't be anything new there. But it, it's a good overview. Um, the stars, I would give it a three and a half to four stars out of five in the old dreaded Amazon review. But uh, uh, I hope you take a look at it. Also, uh, Martin Fowler and, and the other author uh, have a few other talks here on YouTube. So, you know, take a look at them. It might gauge uh, help you gauge if you'd like to buy the book and take a read. But uh, I'd give it a good three and a half, four stars. Best of luck. Thanks for taking the time and uh, thanks again.